better than Kamari does. Sorry about Waka. <laughs> he didn't have to be so mean, yeah? I almost cried. The uh, Riku? Just kidding. It's okay. At least you're still nice. Hey, do I look like Yuni, you think? Huh? Well, my dad's sister is Yuni's mother. You get it? Hmm. Ah. I had no idea. If you say so. Mm-hmm. Okay. I guess you're guarding your family then. Yuna's not the only one that I want to protect. Huh? We all but want to protect all of the summoners, you know? Summoners are... Well, you could say that they sacrifice themselves too well to bring happiness to Spira. What do you mean? Oh. Riku? Yes? Sacrifice themselves? You know, the pilgrimage. It, uh, takes a lot out of you. Oh, right. But you know, Yuna's real serious about being a summoner. For Yuna, well, the pilgrimage kind of means everything to her. You are going to help her too, aren't you, Riku? Mm. So you shouldn't say that Yuna's sacrificing herself. Uh, Riku? I hope you're right. Okay, hello everybody, and welcome to another video. Today we are on the airship bridge. Wow, this is a very different scene to the start of the last episode, right? A lot happened at the end of the last uh, part. We're gonna have a bit of time here just chatting to characters and reflecting on exactly what was going on. We're still in a very action-packed section of the game, so enjoy the nice music right now. Uh, while it lasts. This music for the record is actually the music that plays in the final dungeon of the game. Uh, it's also being used here. It has been remastered and I really enjoy the remastered version compared to the first. It is one of those ones that I thought got way better. Alright, so we've got lots of people to talk to. Riku, how are you feeling? I'm okay. I'm fine. Really. Maybe I should recap the story, actually. I would recommend you guys see the last episode, but basically we realised that summoners are being sacrificed um, at the end of their pilgrimages and the home where all of the Albed were living, we went to because uh, they were hiding summoners there to try and protect them so they wouldn't be sacrificed. Um, but then the Guado attacked the Albed home and basically levelled the place. All the remaining living Albed piled onto this airship that was uh, that was under the control of Sid here, who's the leader of the Albed. We flew away and destroyed the whole place. Now we are looking for Yuna, who seemed to have been taken by the Guado shortly before we arrived. She was in Beaconel, but she's not there anymore, and we're hot on her tail. So anyway, yeah, uh, let's go speak to some of the Albed. What about this guy over here? Make your supper! He's right, His name is Brother. He says, leave me be, I'm concentrating. Flying is not really my forte. Keep flying, keep flying. This guy, he doesn't have much of a role to play in Final Fantasy X, but he's a huge guy in the sequel. Great character, really, really love him. Anyway, so uh, his name is Brother. He is uh, Riku's brother, quite literally, and that is his name, and Sid's son. So he is the heir to, I guess, a great legacy or something. Anyway, you'll notice he's a Blitzball player. You can recruit him. If you played loads of Blitzball already, you could have found an enemy team would have contracted him onto their side. So if you played loads of Blitzball before this part in the story, you may have been fighting against brother in various Blitzball matches and never really known who he was or what was going on with him. He is a fantastic midfielder. You'll notice he's got really high pass, high high shoot, high block, but most importantly really high speed. With a speedy character like this, unless you're against the Guado Glories, you can literally put him in midfield, he wins the blitz off, then he can swim around grabbing aggro on all the enemy team, and then just swim ahead of them all, and then shoot for free on the goal every time. You can cheese everything out. He's a really quick player, one of the faster ones. Not the fastest, actually. I don't believe he ends up with 99 speed, I might be wrong on that. But we could sign him, I'm not going to. Uh, there is actually quite a lot of Blitzball stuff you can do once you get to the airship, so consider that. There's another guy down... Oh, uh, usually there's a guy down there. What about down here? No, there's no guy here. Alright, so Lulu? This is tough on all of us. Absolutely. This they only have one line of dialogue here. Why didn't I just shut my big so, mouth? So, <laughs> Wack is kind of annoyed, because Riku was sad her home was just destroyed, and he said, Yeah, it's like big happy fireworks, yeah? 
Yeah, not very uh, tactful there, dude. Did you find out anything about Yuna? I'm looking into it, okay? <sighs> Don't worry, I'm using a sphere of cellophinder. If she's out there, we'll get her. A sphere of cellophinder? It's an ancient machina. I don't know how it works either, so don't ask me, okay? And do you still use it? Ha <laughs> I don't even rightly know how this rig flies, either. Because <laughs> <laughs> of the given taboo on Machina, we're running around in the dark here. Ain't it a rush, kiddos? So at this point, I think the Arbed are a lot more agreeable. They weren't, they're not necessarily bad guys. They were taking summoners to try and save their life. They're looking for another way to deal with sin. They don't believe the idea that just because uh, we're using Machina, sin still exists. They think there's another way. And after so much time in Spira where nothing has changed, as Auron seems to be angry about, who can blame them? Um, Careful what you touch. Ship's not as stable as she looks. That was a bit of a Deus Ex Machina there, though. It's like, oh god, we gotta get the party to Yuna now, and she's somewhere totally different, somewhere awesome, by the way. Uh, how do we, how do we have them find her? Okay, we'll invent some weird machine that does it for us. Sure, the Sphere of Finder, and it's never used anywhere else either. Remember this ship? It's the one we found under the sea. So we're talking to Sid. The dialogue changes, and yeah, right at the start of the game, all that stuff, the salvage ship we were on, that thing we got underwater. Remember, one of the Albed even said the word airship that we recognised. That's this. We were swimming through this when it was like upside down and all in ruins. This little corridor here, you might even slightly recognise. Imagine it's the other way up, and we swim up through that door. Yeah, this is it. Um, this ship, by the way, it's never referred to in name in game, but this ship is called the Fahrenheit. That wasn't revealed for a long time. Most ships and most Final Fantasies have airships, for the record, um, and they've all they all usually named. Uh, there's been some cool names for them as well, like the Ragnarok was the Final Fantasy VIII one that I always love the name of. But yeah, this is the Fahrenheit. This wasn't named for a long time, and even then, only out in like extra guides and stuff. In the sequel, there is another airship called the Celsius, and so it draws that you know you've got Fahrenheit and Celsius, two different. Uh, means of measuring temperatures, and so that's uh, that's the idea here. This is the Fahrenheit. Uh, Lulu, now we're powerless as long as we're on this ship. Yeah, we sort of are. We're at their beck and call. I can't believe we're flying through the sky in this a machina. He seems even excited. I can't believe. We're Come on, it's like an it's like an amazing shoe puff, dude. We're not going to talk to brother this time. We're going to go along. So here's Auron looking all casual and stuff. I love that shot of Wacker a second ago panicking, and then uh, Auron's just like leaning against this wall. Whether Yuna's safe or not, there's trouble brewing. I wonder why he doesn't seem phased by the fact he's on an airship. He doesn't seem phased by anything. Again, previous pilgrimage. Braska married an Albed woman. Eh? Uh, eh? Uh, maybe. Maybe that he already found an airship before. Whether Yuna's safe. Just a less impressive one. There's always a childhood dream of mine to get rich as an adult and have an airship of my own. How cool would this be? Wait until you see how expansive this place is. It's amazing. Just live in a place like this. Look at this! All these hallways. Here's Kamari. Kamari never forget the Albert sacrifice. Yeah, so there were piles of bodies defending the summoners. Kimari will use Machina if Machina can find Yuna. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Good job. Alright, so over here. Hey. I'm not looking forward to my brother dying when this is all over. If only there was some way of doing it without anyone dying. Let's think of one. Easier said than done. If we had all the time in the world, yeah, we'd think of something. And while we were thinking, sin would kill us all. If you remember, Spira doesn't have that time. Lulu already talked to us about this. She said, "You either run or you die." Remember while we were on the snowmobile? So yeah, uh, here's Asari. We owe our lives to the Albed. However, no matter how they beg, we cannot quit our pilgrimage. Even though you'll die. I've known since I was a child. My will is set. If I do not do it, someone else must, you understand. Makes a bit more sense why he's traveling with his family as well. Spend as much time with them as possible before he can't anymore. I'm amazed this thing can fly, truly. He doesn't seem concerned about the machina. It must be sacrilege to think so highly of a machina. Yeah, right? Yeah. I feel uneasy just riding it. Sure it's not motion sickness? Motion sickness? What infirmity is that? Oh. 
<laughs> and think about us, think about Tidus, man. We're from a Mac in a city of the past. We must have been on an airship before. At least a car or something. Because we know what motion sickness is. Don't, don't, don't you get that on boats anyway? Let him rest. Or is that technically seasickness? Is there even a difference? It's the same thing, right? It's a desynchronization between your eyes and your inner ear. Uh, so anyway, there's a lady here running around. She's training. She says the Albert Sykes all escaped harm. Uh, all escaped harm. We are ready to play again. Yes. So I said there's a lot of political stuff. The Albert Sykes are available here. This is your brief window of opportunity to recruit them onto your team if you want them. Why do you want to do it? Because of this badass right here, Nimrook, best goalkeeper in the entire game. I haven't played, I probably won't play any more Blitzball for this series, but you know, one thing you could at least do is get to the airship, play a ton of exhibition matches, 12 as you can see here, until Nimrod gets kicked off their team. If they don't re-sign him, if they do re-sign him, then just reset and do it, do the last match again. Um, or if they don't, then you can grab him for your own team and have the best keeper. And there's pretty much no reason you'd lose to anyone uh, after that point. Really, really great uh, character, but it takes a while before he's available. Uh, as, a, as a person, he says, we need Blitz to cheer our people after the loss of the, our, our home, do you see? Very similar to everyone else in Spira. Uh, forgive me for my actions in Luca. We wanted to protect the summoner, you see. So this guy's from the Luca thing. All right, no worries, dude. Those Guado, they f they fill me with wrath in the Blitz sphere. Oh, yeah, okay, so you get to fight against the Guado glories. Since childhood, I have played only Blitz. It's true. Thing is, as a group like the Albed, what can they even do? Can they go to the high, um, you know, the people in charge? Can they go to Mesa Micah and complain that the Guado have destroyed them? No, they can't. Nobody likes the Albed. They're using Machina, so, you know, they really are just suffering here. Uh, now is the time to train, train, and then he runs around. Compilation sphere there, don't worry about it. There are no primers on the ship or chests as far as I'm aware. Let me just be 100% sure of that for you guys. Uh, no, there's one chest which is really easy to see, so don't worry about that. I get kind of a very Mass effect -y vibe here, by the way. In Mass Effect, obviously, you've got a spaceship, not an airship. You've got a spaceship. But a lot of the things you do in that game is particularly in Mass Effect 2 is you do a bit of the story you come onto the airship and then you just run around all these different chambers speaking to different characters it's the same thing here for me anyway here's Rin check it out well well it appears you too have escaped harm absolutely you were on the ship too I came to home to pick up some goods and found myself here quite the escape <sighs> thankfully my goods were spared Please let me know if you need any of my wares. So he is a vendor for you on the ship. Let's have a look at what you got. Barrack sword, boring stuff. Rin, you never have interesting stock. I love a walker, I really do. We got over 100,000 gil now, by the way. Which... Thank you. Your patronage is very much appreciated. All proceeds will go to help restore home. Ah, how is your progress with our language? None too shabby. Check this out. Hella do sadwi. Oh! Just repeating what I've said is not talking now. But your pronunciation's quite passable. You've been studying, I see. Dude, that was almost perfect. That's like when German people can't say, like, W or whatever it is. Because we, we just missed that one letter. But yeah, sweet! Okay, so uh, a couple of things about Rin here. If we had all of the primers already, if we'd imported it from another save file. May I help you? When we talk to him here... He would say, wow, you're a master of the Albed language. Here, have this reward. And he would give you a super end game reward because you're not meant to have that. And like one of the primers in the game is in the final, final dungeon, right? So you're not meant to get that reward until the very end. But if you import from another save file, he gives you 99. I think they're winning formulas. The same things you would have to bribe an insane amount of money from those worms to get. Now, what's really awesome about those is, again, you can just cheese the entire game out with insanely powerful Riku's mixes and stuff. And even I think there's some good customizers. So basically, if you were on a no sphere grid challenge, especially once you get to this point, um, unless you're like doing other challenges where you say no overdrives and stuff like that, the game gets much easier now because every battle, every boss battle, you can just do something really cheesy and, and, and win it. So yeah, that's one thing you can do and get very early. Thank you. Your patronage is very much appreciated. The other thing about Rin is you can now recruit him onto your Blitzball team. You couldn't back when we first met him when we got Rop and stuff like that. But now you can. He is free. Um, he's not an amazing player though, so I wouldn't I wouldn't ever really recruit him. I think he's good in like one position. One other thing I want to do is see 
Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on, hold on. I want to go to items, and I want to see how much money we'd get from selling our 98 remedies. 36,000. It's not actually as much as I was expecting. And we, we're not in desperate need of the gill anyway. But yeah. Uh, so we got some... One item I realized I didn't even talk to you guys about was the mega elixir. It's just an elixir for the entire party, okay? Um, so that's all that that was. And a bunch of other stuff. We won't worry too much. Thank you. Okay, Rin, we've spent enough time with you. No, we'll keep exploring the airship. Look how cool this is. Truth be told, the Fahrenheit never really inspired me when I was younger. When I wanted an airship of mine, it was the... Uh, it was either the Ragnarok or the Celsius. They... They both have kind of similar-ish designs. Well, no, not really. I guess they. I like them both in different ways. Anyway, so uh, this in our bed. Poor child. He does not understand that our home is no more. Though. I understand you perfectly. Yeah, very poor child. And this person over here says, uh, "When will we go home?" That's kind of sad, isn't it? Man. So uh, this is probably. Is this a bigger tragedy than Operation Meehan? His Donna. Look, I'm really tired. Leave me. If it's not an emergency, would you mind leaving? <sighs> okay. Why does Titus react like that? Wait, uh, there's something I want to ask you. What would you think if I said I, I was giving up my pilgrimage? Um. So you get a decision here. This does change something later on in the story. Very, very, very minor. But uh, you can really influence Donna here, so let's think about her. Um, she's not been very nice to us at all. Uh, but, you know, if you have some sympathy, if that's what she wants to do, shouldn't we say sure that it sounds good to me? So, yeah. Unusual. Most people would never forgive a summoner who quit. Why is that? Behind my back, they would say I was abandoning my duty. So, who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? Easy for you to say. But, uh, you do have a point. Maybe Bartello and I should go someplace far away. I can understand why people would get annoyed. These summoners have been given loads of extra privileges, items, stuff like that as they've been going around their journey, giving people hope, and then they turn their back on it. You know, it's almost like if you if you make the decision to become a summoner, you're taking that burden of responsibility on you straight away. You know, if you're very young and you decide to be one, then sure, maybe people can forgive you a little bit, making a bad decision when you're younger. But as an adult, if you decide to become a summoner, um, it's it's ridiculous to go back. You know, you accepted that you were going to kill yourself when you started. I can see why people would get annoyed, as, as outrageous as it sounds. Thanks for the company. I feel so much better now. When there's so much culture around it too. Thanks for Almost like an entire religion. A ruling religious state that based on that idea. Anyway, so here we got a cargo hold. Um, no items you can grab here, but lots of people to talk to. The summoner and guardian seem full of... S of, of what? Sorrow. Sorrow is what they say, I think. Years of sweat and toil to build it and, n and now home is rubble. This guy says, no time for tears and shouting. All we must do is rebuild our home. Okay, yeah, I forgot about that accent. I must tell the other players in Luca what has happened. Oh, are you a blissful player? I can't scout you, so you're obviously no good. Uh, this guy says, uh, chased by fiend. We are all very tired and very scared. Uh, I hit my head from the ship when the ship shook. Now I have a lump. And you say, even without our home, we must live on. I only hope I am able kind of sad and all the uh our bed that these people talk to you in and stuff it all changes every time you like push the story a mine a bit forward so this may be one of those situations where i do start skipping a little bit of dialogue but okay so we're coming to the back of the airship now look at this it's so cool uh there is a safe sphere back here i'm actually gonna indulge myself oh we actually can't play blitzball on the airship all right, so the advice for this should have come a long time ago. It should have come just when we were at the Lake Makalania Travel Agency. I should have said to you guys, right, play loads of exhibition magics until, uh, matches until Nimrook is free, and then play all this story stuff. Uh, this guy says, your face. I've seen it before, perhaps in the Temple at Barge. Ah, oh, you were one of the guys that put a knife to my throat at the start of the game. Hi. It's good to meet you. And you're the person that kicked me in the balls. Actually, I think it was Riku that kicked me in the balls. What will I do now? My doll, I left it in home. Ah. Sounds like it could be the start of a side quest. Uh, but we say lose something precious, find something even more precious. 
Another way of saying one door closes, another opens. Is it odd? It, it is odd to fly in a ship dragged from the ocean floor. I love that idea. So back here is some kind of doorway, but we can't go through it. Uh, and that's pretty much the airship explored. I'll cut it until we're back in the main room. And we'll see how uh, the guys have been doing in trying to locate Yuna. Cool. Can you imagine if these episodes of this series were 20 minutes long? Like, literally, we, what have we done? We've talked to a couple of people. It'd be over right now. This would be me saying goodbye. After rescuing Yuna, then what? You want to keep her safe, correct? Would you seek to stop her pilgrimage? Of course! If she continues this fool pilgrimage, she will die. Sure as if you killed her yourself. No harebrained law or teaching could send my little niece to her death. When I save her, I'll make her give up being a summoner quicker than a desert melts ice. Even against her will? Better than a dog's death. And I'll take down anyone who don't agree. You are the captain. Good. Then it's settled. Interesting seeing how Oren reacts to this. And so here, you can see, if we go back... Let him say what he wants. Let him... Uh, apparently Oren just doesn't really care. He's such a troublemaker! Alright, everyone would have changed again. Oh! Riku's so cute when she talks to us in our bed. Maybe it's because last time she spoke to us in our bed, she was saying, you know, we'd get it on when we were a little bit older. He called Yuna his, uh, niece, right? Uh oh. I mean, so that makes her our bed, right? Uh oh. Don't say it. Yuna's Yuna, right? Yes, Waka. Yuna's Yuna. There you go. That sounds like a Kamari thing to say. All right, so that is it. Okay, it's like I say, the history of these people is kind of hard to tell. Braska married an Albed woman and then was frowned on heavily by the temples. They had a daughter named Yuna. That makes Yuna half Albed. The woman that Braska married had a brother. Her brother was Sid. Sid had two children, brother and Riku. That makes Riku and Yuna cousins. That means they knew each other, at least to an extent. Y Yuna told us that she'd never met Sid before. But these two, uh, Riku already had a pet name for Yuna, Yuni and so forth. They sort of knew each other. They knew of their relationship. And so when, when Riku turned up, washed up on the shore, that's why we had that really weird, awkward situation where it's like, Hey, can I be a guardian? Yeah, I wanted to be a guardian. Sure, we're in. It's because they're related. They're cousins and they knew each other and they trusted each other. So yeah, uh, this is Yuna's uncle Sid, who she talked about back in Luca. And uh, there you go. So Yuna is not only... Uh, I guess she's distantly related to the leader of the Albed, as well as the daughter of a high summoner. It's pretty crazy. Uh, so yeah, here's Lulu. No matter what happens, Yuna won't give up her pilgrimage. It just goes to show, if Yevon cared more about Albed, then uh, Yuna would be even more famous than she is. First, we rescue Yuna. Let's show him what we got. And this is why Sid is so invested in rescuing her. First, we rescue And maybe how the idea of the Summoner's Sanctum and so forth was even born. Vitran! For for Yuna! <gasps> Frana! Efim Krufui! I will show you. Yuna! This is where it starts getting intense again. Oh my god. Holy shit, where is this? Was she just next to Seymour? We killed Seymour! Where was that? The palace of St. Bevel, heart of Yevon. Gramps, let's move! Gramps. Easy, kiddo. <laughs> Bevel's defenses are top-notch. What's the matter, Gramps? Are you scared? Yuna's there, so we go and get her! And that's all! <laughs> you got guts? <laughs> God, we can do Bevel! Vim, come on, get it! Look! It'll take a while to get to Bevel. Meanwhile, we prepare for battle. Oh, we're so in tune with each other, man. We were at each other's throats a second ago. Make 
your supper! It's too late, Nidek! Leave me be, I'm concentrating. Sure, I'll leave you be. Sid? They grabbed Yuna back in the Sanubia Desert. One of the Guado squads that attacked home found her. Beaconau Island on Sanubia Desert. No, wait, 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 wait. Sanubia Desert on Beaconau Island. That suggests that there's more than just desert on that island, though you never see it. The city of Bruvel is built on the water. There may be underwater fighting. Whoa, a city? You or Riku should study your magic, just in case. A city built on the water? Huh? What were we talking about before? About how that other city built on the water was sunk to the sea and it's a lesson. Well, Bavel and what did Sid mean? It Well, it has top-notch defenses against a machina-powered airship with nukes that just destroyed an entire city. This is, this is Yevon. They, they hate machina. Here's a uh, wacker. I'm glad Yuna's okay and all, but what's with those fancy clothes? It's called a wedding dress. What? What has been going on, guys? What's going on? Yeah, Wacker, I don't know. Seymour is one of the dead now. Odd. Why does Maester Micah allow the unsent to walk free? All right, so he's an unsent, but he hasn't become a fiend because he still has purpose, I guess. Interesting. Remember, if you die, you don't you don't just disappear. You can you you sort of still exist. Here's Riku. What's Seymour doing alive? Didn't we? Take care of him in Makalania? He is dead. As dead as Jiskal was. His attachment to this world kept him from the next. Oh, scary. What business does he have? His attachment is to marry Yuna? How did all of that happen? She's gonna marry him now? Yuna must be trying to send him. Wonder if that'll work. Perhaps he won't expect it. Uh, do you really believe that, Oren? But there you go, yeah. It's just like before. She accepts the proposal. Maybe she's just going to try and send him. We were going to send him after we killed him, remember? Oren said it straight away when he died. Oren said, send him. He was on the ball with it. But before you had a chance, friggin' uh, I almost swore there. Trommel came in with the, the guado and, and walked out. The Vel. It's been ten years. Oh my god, yeah, and Oren, you've been to the Vel before. The Vel. Oh god. <laughs> We're being attacked from within. Some of the Guado that attacked home must have snuck on board. You're awfully calm about it. <laughs> I am calm about most things. <laughs> Fiends! There's nothing to do but... But destroy the ship and all go down together. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face. <laughs> uh. You gotta learn a little restraint, Pops. If you crash the ship, we can't go rescue Uni. Leave the fiends to us professionals. Yeah, let's go. Thanks. Riku, you've made some very good friends, I think. Good luck. I like how they're just frowning at each other. All right, cool. Yeah, they make it kind of funny. The, the only reason the Guado are really here is boss fights. They can't throw you in a situation where there is no way to train or anything. You know, um, so yeah, this is uh, this is your opportunity to get stronger. We're actually coming up to one of the most difficult boss encounters in all of Final Fantasy X. It's the encounter that I completely broke my way through very easily. We'll talk to brother here. Meet your supper. Oh, he still says leave me be. What does Sid say? Hey, relax. This ship still got some fight left in. All right, and we're gonna save. It's uh, one of the most iconic battles in all of Final Fantasy X. One of the most memorable ones for me. The one I got genuinely like, you know, s stalled in the game for a long, long, long time while I was playing it. And on my test file, without even trying to train much, I just d destroyed the boss. It's the reason why in this LP I wanted to keep myself under level, even though that's been really hard to sort of pull off in the end. So I'm not really worrying that much, but there's things I can demo and stuff that might make it a bit harder. Anyway, so now that there's Guado on the ship, yeah, would you believe it? All the dialogue from all these NPCs have changed. He, she says, take care, there are fiends in all places. Uh, we are actually susceptible to random encounters in some of these rooms now. I hopped on uh, only to rest at home a while. I hope to only rest a while at home and then return to Luca is what he says. Uh, this is, um, this I leave up to you. Battle has never been my forte. Everyone be calm, be calm. Fury is our enemy. Uh, you haven't found the place of our home. Perhaps they, perhaps we were followed. Perhaps we were indeed. I will not die in this place. I fear no fiend. Come and I will fight. So they're all reacting to it differently. 
Here we go, here's an encounter. Same setup as we had in home. Totally optional whether you go for these. I am not going to fight a single one. Not a single one. I'm not interested in it. Uh, you'll see Auron's over, Auron's over 3,000 health now, which is pretty nice. So uh, you guys don't have to worry about that. And I just, I don't think I need any more training. I don't want any more training. Um, so yeah, anyway, that's that chamber down there. I'll get a move on with this stuff. We'll guard this area. Sweet, so no random encounters here, apparently. <laughs> and then we get on straight away. Crappy job guard in there, guys. Well done. Live and let live. There you go. Uh, we will talk to this guy. Be careful. Where's this Saru? May I help you? Uh, he's still saying stuff. We don't Thank care. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, why are they there without Asaru? Come on. I guess Asaru has Aeons. That was another thing I wanted to mention about that cutscene earlier where we learned about the summoners. I had just said we'll in the series. The other compartments to you. Okay, thank you. I had just said in the series that um, it was cool when monsters were on the field, and then that cutscene is full of Aeons and, you know, a fiend back there. I think that's the only time in the game as well you see bodies turn into a fiend before your very eyes. It's too cramped to call Aeons here. I'll leave this fight to you. Show us your stuff. Well, if you hadn't been so lazy and got Shiva already, I'm pretty sure Shiva isn't too big for here. I can use a weapon. I will show them how our bed fight. Cool, this is so difficult. It's only a couple of letters thrown off, but I'm finding it so hard. Come, Guado, I challenge you. I will fight you till you are all dust. This guy says, okay, okay. Uh, my friends, they died protecting the summoner. I will do the same. It pains me most to see the children scared, she says. I love it when you can, you can uh, translate everything. The corridor is protected by summoners, so this room should be safe. Well, now the um, summoners are sort of returning the favor, I guess. Not scared, not scared, not scared, not scared. There you go. All right. Uh, last opportunity as well, obviously, here to steal musks from evil eyes. Uh, we're going to work our way to the back of the ship. I guess the idea is we're clearing the ship of fiends as we... All right. Save, for the love of God, save. You notice the door back there is now open. The owl bed around here have changed positions too. Do the Yevon uh, worms think to kill us all? It is a battle, most dangerous. Take this with you for owl bed potions. Thank you so much. Huh. Now there's a rare sight. Whoa, that's huge! What is that? The guardian worm, Evre. The great sacred beast, protector of Bavel. Oh, look at that animation as it dives. The red carpet has teeth. Oh. Wait, that means we're close to Bavel. Riku, you read me. We're gonna fight that thing. Get on deck and show him what you got. Go! There he goes again. The ferryman asks a high price. Oh, Oren's dialogue is so good. <laughs> the red carpet has teeth. So this is what has always protected, well, part of what has always protected Bavel. Why was Luca safe despite a lot of people there? That was where the Blitzball Stadium was. The Crusaders fought, gave their lives to defend it. Bavel, they have the Guardian Worm. And you'll notice on the map up at the top, uh, intertwining around the banner, you've got Lady Unaleska and Lord Zeon, but up there you also see what looks like some kind of serpent. A lot of people have speculated that is supposed to be Evre. Evre is a big part of this world. You also see out in the waters as well, to the left of like the Mien High Road, north of Luka, stuff like that. You'll see another one in the water. We never re really meet such a monster. But yeah. All right. I, do you know what I just noticed on the ship as well? There's a, there's a, on the map, there's a ship coming from the west, sailing to the, uh, th these lands. I wonder whether that's meant to be an indication of something. All right. So yeah, Evre, the Guardian Worm. This fight is not easy. It's a, a really, really cool one. And I have a lot of memories of it just because of how, how stuck I used to get. Open the hatch. We fight. Evre is truly mighty. Be well prepared. All right. You got any weapons? Uh, no, his wares haven't changed, and it's kind of cheap that he's charging us, right? We gotta pay? If we lose, you'll die too, buddy. I have faith in your victory. <laughs> Gee, thanks. <laughs> I don't know what to think about Rin. I really don't. 
Okay, am I ready for this? Let me check my equipment. Alright, so we got the powerful halberd thing for Kamari. Did you know I could buff that even further right now? I could buff that to um, have magic plus 10% as well for a 30% boost. There's also something later on in the game called uh, MP booster. Uh, which I kind of, or which is magic booster, which I kind of want to put on him, but we don't have the items for that yet. Uh, so, Thunderblade. Um, we could go with the sentry, try and get a preemptive strike on it, but I don't think that'll do much. Let's just, uh, is he weak to any element? No, they're all half damage. So, actually, I'll tell you what, we don't want Auron to have yeah, help you. any element on his weapon, because Everett is resistant to all of them. So, let's go with, uh, this strength plus 5% one for Auron. Thank and let's... You. Let's even customize onto it. Uh, where is it? Here it is. It's right at the bottom. Let's customize onto it. Uh, strength plus three percent, I guess. Another three percent. I mean, why not? It won't. It won't hurt. So here we go. There you go. So it's now got plus eight percent damage for Auron. All right, that's sweet. So what else have we got? Uh, yellow bracer, which is uh, lightning ward. Uh, glorious bracer looks better. It's got more defense on it. Um, let's keep scrolling through. The Avenger or the Brotherhood? Well, Brotherhood's got element strike, so we don't care about that. The Lifesaver might be pretty cool. I could give him the Lifesaver and then, like, auto potion too. That would be, like, insane. That would be really cool. But I'm not going to bother with that. Actually, let's keep the Avenger, I suppose. The only other one would be, like, the Hunter's Sword, which would give us thingy, but that's not going to matter. So, for Lulu, she doesn't really have anything interesting. Um, she's got a Seeker's band up, Bangle. This boss doesn't do any elemental damage, so I'm just trying to swap that stuff away. Dark Ward, whatever. TKO doesn't matter. Noise Breaker. There you go. This scout looks pretty strong. Riku has that. That's fine. And she's got a bunch of health. Uh, now, Kamari's going to be a bit weak. So is Lulu in this fight, frankly. Just, well, Lulu's got some stuff she can do because she can poison the boss. But uh, aside from that, Kamari's not really going to be able to do very much. So, we're done with that. I wish... I, maybe I should go charge some overdrives. How close is Riku? She's not close at all, so screw it. We're not gonna we're not gonna mix anything. Guides recommend Welcome. you use a uh, mix for Riku here, but Thank there's you. no point. All right, let's do it. I think we're ready. Let's go up. This thing is bigger than the airship. Oh, hello. We gotta keep our distance, boys, but we can't let her get too far away. Y'all have to tell me when to move. So we go every very cool battle scene right on the friggin airship this guy has an awful lot uh, going on with him so uh, two people get trigger commands Riku and Titus uh, they get to move in and pull back they command Sid what to do okay uh, give an order and Sid will move the airship on his next turn to cancel use cancel command before Sid takes his turn so you might want to change things now you'll notice up on the ATB grid there's a new face up there that's Sid's face he's a, a participant here so if I tell, tell Sid to pull back we won't move until it's Sid's go right and then he'll pull us back so uh, I will open up by pulling back go back farther away just a minute so um Okay, so he's just managed to hit us there. So there's uh, basically two modes to this fight. When you're close to him like we currently are, and when you're far away like we will be in just a moment. So what can Auron do? Well, uh, he's got Drain. When, when did I? Oh, yeah, that accidental black magic sphere. That's ridiculous. Okay, so look, uh, what we're going to do is just mug with Auron here. And uh, none of the breaks that Auron can use, he is actually vulnerable to. So you don't have to worry about those. Uh, Kamari here will at least get a turn in so that he gets some experience later, but I probably won't use him that much. So he's resistant to elements, so uh, 800 damage on a fire. And now we're going to pull away. So uh, by pulling away, we've now moved out of range of some of Evray's more basic attacks. 
Evre will attempt to fly closer to us though. He's going to have a turn in just a second. Um, and also now because we're far away, we can't hit him with regular attacks. He's now out of range. So we have to do stuff like uh, if Yuna was with us, you know, we could summon Valifor and have him fly out there. That would be pretty badass actually, but Yuna's not with us. Um, you can use magic, lance it. Think about that first fight back on the SS Licky or whatever. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to cast slow on the boss. This is his one weakness. Most bosses are immune to slow. This guy isn't, for a time. I'll talk about it as it happens. So you can slow him down. Time magic is really strong. So here he's using an ability called Photon Spray. Uh, which can hit across the entire gap. But you'll notice we get a ton of turns before Every gets one uh, herself right now. And now what we're going to do is turn around and start hasting our guys. Now Every has ways to strip this haste. This is it. I'm hitting it with all we got. Okay, and the other reason why you want to be far away is when Sid gets a turn while you're far away, he'll unleash his guided missiles, which is like our version of Photon Spray. Pretty good, right? That will only happen three times before Sid runs out of ammo. See, Salvo's remaining, just two. So you can at least spend the time or at a distance to give Sid that, you know, enough goes. Giving slow on Evray means Sid gets more goes than Evray comparatively. So uh, you can do that, right? And in the meantime, Oran's already had his go, so we're going to get rid of him and bring Lulu in. Uh, Lulu can cast magic, even though magic isn't particularly strong. She can hit him from far away, and I believe you can poison this guy. So let's have a look. Have a memory of poisoning him. No, immune, damn it. Why did I feel like I could poison him? All right, that's fine. So, uh, Kamari already a go. We'll just cast another F Fira. So even though he's resistant to those kinds of spells, while you're far away, you don't really have much other option anyway, right? So we're just going to keep Titus out, hasting people away. Uh, Lulu's had her go. I don't know why I hated her. And uh, Kamari hits harder, so we'll just get rid of that. Waka, however, fantastic character if you think about it. I mean, he can friggin' he can hit this guy with a physical attack that isn't reduced um, from all the way over here. Check out that aim. Boom. Crit of 2k? What is that? Oh my god, Waka, you're too much of a boss. Going to unleash another uh, salvo in a second. Here we go, here's a guided missiles coming in. Now, Evry's got 32,000 health. Um, we've got one salvo left. So we will have started to chip into that. Here comes another photon spray. And a great counter to the damage photon spray does to you. It comes from Riku, who can throw Albed potions. So here we go. Uh, we'll go one more. That one didn't crit, but that's fine. Riku also hasn't had a go yet. So Riku's super useful, not just because she has Albed potions, but also she can throw stuff at him. She, you know, so this is why Mix is so good. You can mix from really far away. I'm pretty sure you can hit him with stuff. Let's try throwing a... Uh, I don't know. What can we even throw at him? He's, he's immune to most statuses. He's immune to elements. He's immune to most statuses. What else have I got? Uh, just a regular grenade, a smoke bomb. So you could mix two bombs together and create like a tall boy or something. Do you know what? I w Let's just try it. Out of range. Okay, so you can't throw anyway. And after this third salvo has been unleashed, we're going to move in. Here's another attack from Waka. You know, if I taught Waka Mug instead of Auron, which is totally viable, he would have this weird idea where he throws the ball and then an item sticks to it as he hits the enemy and then it comes back. It should be called like Sticky Ball or something. <laughs> Alright, that's a ridiculous name. Okay, uh, come on Sid, have a go, Jesus. We'll, uh, do you know what? We'll bring uh, Kamari in. I'm trying to be efficient, but I'm also trying to think of a lot of things I want to talk to you guys about. So, it's making me play a little bit badly. It's not very dangerous right now, anyway. So, don't worry too much. You can still water gems from this guy. It doesn't mean very much. We'll cheer with Titus since he can't do anything else. Shouldn't have pressed triangle last time. I should have cheered anyway. And really, Auron should be out if I'm cheering a lot. But whatever, this is buffing uh, Whacker. Got another one. And here we go. This is Sid's third salvo. There we go. So, with this thing unleashed, um, I mean, Evray should have moved in closer to us as well, but I mean, he hasn't because we've had so many goes. This is why time magic is so powerful. No missiles left. There might be some dialogue of Sid saying, hey, yeah, I'm out, I'm out of silos or whatever, but we're not going to look at that. So, we're going to move closer. in. Go closer. By moving in, we obviously uh, open ourselves up to do a lot more damage. When Evray gets low and he decides to move into you as well, is Kamari not hasted? Is that why he's taking like a year to have a go? He's not. Oh well, it's too late now. It's not going to make any difference, so we'll just chip. Um, he has these very dangerous attacks where as he moves in, he swipes damage at you. These are all abilities I want to show you guys, because so far all he's been doing is spamming photon spray, and the battle's been very easy. 
This is what I was worried about. We've got to show these mechanics off. Kamari didn't get hit once there. What is that? Uh, one more cheer. And then finally Kamari gets a go. And we'll bring Auron in. And I'll make Auron throw when he comes in. You know, this game would be very different if when you swap someone in, they instantly lost their turn. But maybe that'll be a bit too punishing. I'm gonna throw a Mega Potion, maybe a bit of a waste. We haven't used many of them though, so I don't mind too much. And uh, this is just gonna bring everyone back up to their full health. You'll notice we're all quite tanky guys at the moment. And this should mean as soon as we move in, we are ready to slam him pretty hard. And that's about to happen right here. So, Evray just got low on health and he just cast haste on himself. Now by doing this, he he has removed the slow we put on him. You notice he starts to spaz out, right? Uh, we've removed the slow that we put on him. And now if we try and cast slow again, we only have like a 50% chance that it will land. And if it lands, uh, Evray will just recast haste on himself the next turn. So it might not be worth doing it. Your more viable option is delay attack, which will um, much more reliably delay his turn. So you can just keep spamming delay attack on him until he's dead. He's got less than 10,000 health left now. It's only going to be a matter of attacks here. I should have mugged there, but whatever. And he's just going to melt down. So uh, I think we, ha we are in a situation, 4,000 health. We're in a situation here, guys, sadly, where I've just wrecked the bus without him even showing some stuff off. So I'm going to talk about a few things here. Uh, this is Sid's next turn. 2k health. I mean, if Wacker crits, then he kills it. Alright, so I want to talk to you guys about some stuff. When you're close to Evray, let's just pass some turns. Come on. Give the poor thing a chance. Yes, he uses this ability here called Stone Gaze. That petrifies members of your party. Um, and you have to cure that straight away. We all know how dangerous Petrify is. He also has an attack called Scythe. Which he may be about to use. No, that's him breathing in, okay? So he's got an attack called Scythe, right? Which is where he's come, if you're far away, he swoops in and then he does tons of damage to people and he shatters anyone who is petrified, completely removing them from the battle. His other attack is when he breathes in, as he just did, uh, you'll see, if you stay close to him, he unleashes poison breath. The idea of the battle is you see him breathe in and then you move away so that you avoid poison breath and then you move back in and then you continue to fight. That's the way the battle is supposed to work. Uh, so our bed potions removed poison, didn't they? So we can bring Riku back in. Use our bed potion. And this cures silence and petrify as well. You can see how strong the Albed potions are in this fight. So there you go. Uh, and that's poison breath. So those are that's pretty much the mechanics you're meant to be dealing with while you're fighting this guy. There's some weird bits of trivia about the boss too. You know that petrify ability he just used on us? There's just his regular attack. The petrify ability that he uses um, will always petrify, but if you have something like petrify proof on your characters, oh my god, that counter. All right, we're just gonna try and overkill him with the slice and dice here, okay, ready? Uh, so if you get petrified by him, but you have petrify proof on, it will, instead of petrifying you, apply slow to you. It's this weird like thing in the game, and that slow will get through any defense. There's a special type of gear in the game called Ribbon that is supposed to be 100% immunity to all statuses, but that slow will go even through Ribbon. And it is possible to have Ribbon at this point if you've played enough Blitzball. So yeah, really, really uh, interesting stuff. He's also got another attack that he never uses called Critical Strike, which is basically like his regular attack, except um, it has lower power, and I guess the idea is it's meant to have 100% crit chance, but instead, funnily enough, it has a 0% crit chance and he never uses it so it's some weird thing in the code but yeah that's uh, that's every guys maybe not as epic as I was hoping it would be but there you go so uh, slice and dice I'm hoping this will be an overkill just certainly hope it would be there you go and down he goes uh, as ever I think time magic is OP but even if I didn't cast slow on him it wouldn't have done much that was a huge struggle for me when I first played the game huge I remember being ecstatic when I first killed the boss, and I wanted a little bit of that back here to share with you guys. We didn't quite get it. All right, but Evray's down. Losing power, but we see Vivel. Bunch of AP, not actually, uh, Cactars are giving us more. Another two black magic spheres, that's great if I hadn't wasted one. Uh, Basilisk Steel, that's going to be Petrify Strike for, uh, or Touch for Titus. As well as Waka. All the gear seems to be going to those two. We're coming, Yuna.
Oh, look at the veil, man. Using fireflies as fireworks. Oh, there's something really messed up about this. Oh, that's Keynock. Long time no see. Oh, snap. They know we're here. Look at the guns they've got. What is this? Giant, like, cannon robot thing. Oh, man. She's got no idea what's going on. Oh, yeah. And the Albedo just pissing off. Oh, I love. Ah, jeez. Seymour just looks so smug there, smiling slightly. Luna! We just airdropped in. Uh, I mean, such a heavily guarded wedding. Uh, welcome to Bevel, the Tower of Light. 